Hi, everyone. This is the Amazon Playbook Podcast brought to you by Turnkey Product Management. I am your host, Brad Enright, and I am the Director of Clients and Partnerships here at Turnkey. Today, we're excited to bring you our latest episode of the podcast. We're going to be talking to Max Sinclair, the founder of a really cool company called eContent. And they are a company that focuses on AI to help Amazon sellers with listings and creative assets. And so we're looking forward to catching up with Matt today, Max, excuse me, to talk about AI and how it's going to help support Amazon sellers. Max, how are you today? Good, good, Brad. Nice to be here. How are you? I'm doing well. I know you move around a lot. Where where do we find you today? I'm currently sitting in San Francisco in the textiles offices, the accelerator my company is currently on. So yeah, we're on the we're on the eBay slash textiles kind of joint program. So a lot of well, everyone here is e-commerce focused. So it's cool to be in the Bay for the last month. And yeah, nice. Yeah, it's a beautiful time of year to be in San Francisco. It's always a good time to be in San Francisco, but uh, mm. this time of year, it's really nice. So awesome. Well, enjoy your time while you're there. Again, we appreciate the time today. Love e content, love what you guys are doing. So let's get right to it. Uh, tell us a little bit about e content. I know you, I know you spent some time at Amazon, so I'm sure that led it to a really easy transition for e content, but Tell us the founding story behind e-content and what do you guys do for Amazon sellers? Sure. So I, as you mentioned, I was at Amazon for six years. I left Amazon in 2022 and about three weeks after I left, I met my co well, I had met my co-founder on like a kind of startup kind of dating kind of program where you kind of meet, you know, co-founder speed dating kind of thing. I should say, not not like, you know. Yeah, yeah, got it. All, <laughs> yeah. A bit like Love Island, if uh, I don't know if American or The Bachelor, as you have it in America, but for, for founders. And anyway, like about three weeks into this program, I was on, Stable Diffusion released their first public release of their first AI model. And this is kind of in a pre-chat GPT era. So this technology was very, very new. And while some companies kind of had been building on OpenAI, like Jasper, the public didn't like, n- nobody really knew about it. I certainly never have heard of like generative AI. It wasn't really, you know, it wasn't top of anyone's mind. And Stable Diffusion released this model where you could train or build on, on top of it, basically. And that really, you know, my, my co-founder, my now co-founder kind of showed me this about a week after it was launched. And I said to him, could you train this model to put a product image into that, into the scene? And he kind of over the weekend built this scrappy prototype kind of MVP where like you could, but you had all these problems, which, which are kind of quite classic with AI of the product being distorted and hallucinations and, you know, text being kind of blurred all this kind of stuff but like immediately i could kind of see the you know potential of this and it was super exciting because like like it really felt like being right at the beginning of like such a transformative technology you know like i imagine like the 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 first people on kind of the you know i hasten to say this for like the dot com bubble like you know those entrepreneurs you know what must have felt where they're like wow like what was not possible yesterday is now possible it doesn't matter how big the comp- competition are like everyone's starting from zero when it comes to this tech so if yeah. we move fast and we have good execution and you know what like we've solved a real problem for customers like the world is our oyster and yeah we've been building since then we've we've kind of evolved our first iteration so yeah li- literally like we launched i think in november last year like the first mvp november 2022 which was just that image generation side we've since added kind of generating infographics generating optimized text so we kind of do the whole product listing now and now our focus is you know doing this at scale so enabling sellers to kind of like generate infographics thousands of listings with with a few clicks 
and text like the similar with a few clicks and that continuous optimization side and yeah so exciting time and that's that's kind of what we do and where, where we're going very cool very cool i love how you met your co-founder that's a that's a good story mm -hmm. let's back up just a bit give most people probably have a, a, a decent idea of what ai is and w what it is and how it works but just for those that maybe that aren't as informed just give a brief you know overview of what exactly generative ai is and how it works mm -hmm. and you know so they have a little bit more context yeah. of how this will apply to, to to their amazon business so i think i think this is like understanding this is critical because it's now everywhere right and my my kind of key takeaway is that generative ai where we are is not magic there's no intelligence in these machines they're just extremely good prediction models agi is a separate question it's what it kind of like all these debates about when you see like rishi sunak and elon musk together like the frontier ai summit like that's a separate thing and you know maybe that's coming in a year two years who knows but what we have right now is fundamentally like extremely good prediction models so what, what's happening in, in the generative ai space is you know you're giving the let's take for text like chat gpt you're giving the chat gpt sentence a prompt and it's basically from all the data that it's trained on projecting the most likely next word so you you give it you give it you know and it's kind of been fine-tuned to have this like question and answer you know response it that that is you know there's thousands of examples of questions and answers on the internet so basically you ask it a question and it's just predicting based off your question the most likely next word the next token in that sequence same for image which we do as well like it's just predicting the most likely next pixel based on the prompt you're giving it you know like i don't know like my cup on a coffee table with a woman behind it it's just you know using that information and predicting the most likely next pixel based on its training image so there's there's no innate intelligence in these things they like they don't understand the concepts they don't understand the text they're saying they don't understand the the images they're creating they're just very very good at like crunching thousands and thousands and millions of kind of you know data right. uh, points of data to create an output that looks and gives the appearance of intelligence and magic and like amazingness but but yeah so it's 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 a safe assumption that the AI, like a smartphone, it's as smart as the user that is using it. So if, you, if you're good at prompts and you're able yes. to do that, you'll you'll get good value from it. If you're not good at prompting, it's not going to be as valuable. That, that's that's completely accurate. Like, you, you know, rubbish in, rubbish out, as, as they say, like it's especially with kind of like the AI on, on our service, like we fine tuned it on a bit, you know, to the images, we fine tune them on like, a, a number of like kind of product lifestyle images that we purchased for, for similar for the infographics and the text we fine tuned it on like top performing Amazon, you know, copy. So all, all that it's doing is, you know, it's taking your prompt, taking that like fine tuning training, and then the base model, which is not ours, which is like Sable Diffusion or, you know, OpenAI, ChatGPT or Claude or whoever, yeah. and then basically creating predicting the best next pixel word whatever based off your prompt and it's uh, fine tuning and the base model you've got clients you've been you've been having this you've had this business out for about a year what yep. are what are you seeing your clients and just in general what are you seeing amazon sellers how are they implementing this technology to help with better product listings, better creative assets. Yeah. And to extend that question, how can they become good or how can they become better at prompting so they can get better results? And then what are the good ways that they can continue to train their AI mm -hmm. so they can get better results, even if they don't prompt it as well or takes them a while to get it figured out? So I like, I talked, you know, I talk to, I try to talk to at least one customer a day. In addition to that, as you can imagine, as a CEO, I do like sales calls with, with you know, big, sure. big enterprise clients. So like, I'm talking to a lot of kind of e-commerce leaders a day, which is, which is, which is great. And I, I really enjoy doing. And like, 
there's definitely you know there's definitely a massive focus on this i know in some of the bigger kind of aggregator companies they they have like ai task force or this kind of stuff they've like specifically kind of you know normally a founder or ceo or ceo or cpo or someone is involved in this and they are you know method you know they're going through their the different parts of their business and looking what they can automate and this this is like it's an incredible opportunity to augment and increase productivity and increase effectiveness across every possible line of your business you know from kind of customer service to like product listings which we help with to you know inventory management to like any like basically you name it like these generative AR models are going to be able to help Human or humans augment themselves in, in in some capacity, right? Because they can kind of just create more text, images, video, forecasts, whatever, like numbers, whatever, whatever it is. They can they can kind of generate it, at a, you know, in a in a very useful and, and and practical and lifelike way. Now, on the kind of prompting question, we've you know we've done a lot of research into prompting. You know, we've got. I think about 15 kind of students we've paid from the University of Toronto who label up all of our images, the customer images, and we kind of have done a lot of analysis on what prompting, what structure looks like, and then we've done kind of our own experimentation from that, like, you know, from that custom data. So we've got a pretty decent understanding of e-content of, you know, like, how you can prompt and it's not just for our service but like like it to greater or lesser extent to be applicable to any kind of like image generation sure. um, and we like the kind of best structure would be to um follow following kind of have your subject in or on the scenario slash location and then a bunch of descriptors at the end so for example you could say chair which is a subject in an office setting which is kind of the scenario location and then descriptors like you know high quality lighting hdr 8k like what you know maybe maybe these are different different situations maybe you would have you know like fireworks in the background or something if you're outside or like you know snow on the ground if it's a christmas type feeling or you know like christmas themed decoration and or whatever so like but fundamentally you want to say like you want to give the ai uh tell it what it, the product is because it's not going to know because it's kind of these ai as i said yeah. the, these ais are dumb so like let's say you're selling this mug you like don't say like max's like special mug just or whatever the brand name is just say mug in or on like like how's it interacting with the environment like on a table and then where is it like in an office setting and that would be yeah that that's kind of the best format for, for prompting so just be so it sounds like just be specific yeah don't be vague be specific as specific terms i would imagine help it learn more exactly yeah in in terms of learning like there's no well i guess like that depends on like what the fine tuning is going on behind it so like there's no it's an indirect it's indirectly learning through like the research that we do on you know there's there's kind of there's not as you're if you're using chat gpt and you're giving it feedback yeah, yes i like this no i like that they will then use that in their fine tuning but it's not like you're not training a model by 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 using it got it okay makes sense ai is you know it's still in its infancy here yeah how where do you you know you've been in the business for a year and you've you've seen great strides in a year where do you think it'll be in another year? How much is this going to be a game changer for Amazon sellers creating, you know, optimized listings and, you know, more engaging, I hopefully higher converting creative assets for their listings? I think, and I've, I've said this before in, in, in the listing space, I always think that if you have, you know, your top two products, you'll probably always want to get a photographer, a copywriter, and a graphic designer and make something like completely new and unique and beautiful based on like what you know about your customers. I don't think you like, I, I don't see a world where we replace that for the top 10%. 
I mean, one reason is like AI only knows what it's been trained on, right? So it's not like mm-hmm. it, it, it's, you know, if you bring some completely new whatever, it's, it's going to struggle. However, I think for the for the for the ninety percent, AI is going to be extremely useful to 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 update, to optimize, to kind of get everything to like the basic level of what you need for for, for listings. And I think we're going to see that. I think more broadly, there's going to be massive changes in search. I think PPC is how that is managed is going to change massively because Amazon will be moving to Project Nile as it's called, but you know, like a kind of Bing type, like chatbot type search, where you kind of are, you know, you ask it a conversational question like, "I need a new laptop case," and it knows what laptop you bought because it has that data. It knows, you know, your color preferences because you always buy black things. It knows mm-hmm. your price preferences because you always buy like mid-range stuff, and it's going to give you five options that suit you as a customer. And you're no longer going to be scrolling through thousands. So I think that's going to fundamentally alter how PPC works. You know who exactly how we don't know, but it's it's definitely like the the consumer experience is going to radically change, and therefore the sellers you know sellers are going to have to adapt. And some will be great at it, and some will, will not be great. You know, will, will fall by the side, and new people come, and this is what happens. You know, it's as as new technology comes so i think yeah i think there's going to be some big changes coming along based on this technology we've talked about a lot of the positives what are some of the negatives <laughs> with ai and mainly not so much the negatives what are some things that people you know should watch out for some yeah kind of best practices so what are some worst practices that they should be on the lookout for what are some red flags so they're not getting themselves in trouble. I know you can't copyright violation. You can't infringe on copy or any sort of IP with AI because it's it's doing what you ask it to do. You can't tell it to copy something that's already been written. I guess I guess you could, but that wouldn't be very smart. But so, what are some things that they should keep their eyes out for so they they don't get themselves in trouble? Yeah, I I think firstly i'll proceed this by saying i'm you know i'm not a lawyer i don't you know i'm not giving yeah, legal yeah i'm not asking for um, legal advice yeah absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll repeat you know i'll paraphrase what i've been told by my lawyer but it might not and i know you know might not might not do it fully correctly or whatever but like the the legislation is going to radically change per location so in the eu they're kind of drawing up some very stringent laws none of this has been passed yet right like but will be happening in the next year or two in the uk they're having completely completely the opposite they're going like very pro ai and kind of like trying to differentiate themselves i think you know with this brexit like it, the uk can now like write its own completely different laws and this is one area where like the prime minister has like really focused on is like this is where we're going to like stand out and we're going to hopefully benefit so in the U- in the uk you can copyright ai generated stuff so i could go into a mid journey create a logo copyright it right which which is kind of in, incredible if you think about it because like yeah. it's the opposite is you know the eu is going in completely the opposite direction i'm not an expert in the us at all but it's state by state i believe but again like i think all of this stuff is being worked out i think the challenges legislators have is it you like we live in a global world it's you know it's very competitive and therefore like the genie is out the bottle and it's be, you know it's been out of the bottle for a year and people are kind of using it ha- like hands free all in and actually like i would argue there haven't really been any ch- like you know one of the biggest issues that people thought would happen is there'd be like tons of fake news right everyone's like oh no like the le- the reason that this is this is something very interesting where like meta actually released a chat gpt earlier than open ai and they released a chat gpt but it was specifically for research and people said oh this is terrible like people are going to be making up research papers like you're not going to be know what's true anymore and they shut it down so like meta had released this kind of like llm yeah. the first one and then they shut it down and then chat gpt a startup were like fuck it like we don't care like what the consequences are like we, we you know we don't have all this stuff on our back and it's been completely transformation transformational and actually like i don't think there has like 
there hasn't, you know, fake news has always been a problem. It's, it's definitely still a problem, but there hasn't been this kind of like creating of fake stories with AI that people imagined. There have been other stuff which is, you know, which has happened. And I think with the images and the voice, especially the voice, were getting more dangerous. Like in the UK, again, there was like these fake kind of AI generated voice recordings of the opposition leader kind of like swearing, at, you know, swearing and bullying people, right? And this was released. Yeah during their party conference and it was like it was fake and but it went completely viral on tri- twitter and like people who dislike this person were like oh look at him he's terrible and the damage is done right so i think there's it's it's a brave new world this interesting new world that we're moving into i think the like my biggest advice would be like understand what this is and what it isn't it's not kind of some magical intelligence like that could be coming with agi where like the ai you know understands concepts and learns and the rest of it but we're not there what we have now is like extremely smart prediction models and it, and like extremely smart prediction models are extremely useful in basically any any aspect of a business right like we're, we're all trying to like work out where to focus our time and like trying to predict like i focus resource here and then this is going to give me this output and whatever like doesn't matter what business you're in if you're like you know a tool or like an agency or a seller like everyone is trying to like predict some things right and we have these extremely intelligent prediction models so like right now we're 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 in a place where it's very useful you know agi is a completely separate topic it's a scarier topic in my mind and and yeah that's you know one for the future just quickly for those that don't know you don't have to don't go up you don't have to go into a long description just what does agi stand for just what what is it yeah. just real quick so, just so it, agi know. is um artificial general intelligence so basically yeah. the concept is and it sounds very scientist like science fiction that like ais will be able to understand general things and they'll be able to learn and then like quite quickly you won't need you know you won't need teach well like i think the argument is like you could then teach like all the kids in africa right or anywhere because like yeah. they all going a personal teacher the teacher understands the student like the artificial teacher like understands the student they can like give them the the right thing that they personally need for their person you know for their personal learning style and whatever else so like it's it's like it's like a general intelligence model and this is a goal of open ai like the explicit goal of open ai it's a goal of google it's a goal of Met- like a lot of these companies are, are aiming in this direction and i mean i think as like given you know i have full faith in humanity in some ways like i think if people aim their big resource into a direction and smart people yeah. work on i think we'll get there like you know i think it's happened on like getting to the moon and like everything else that people would would imagine is impossible so i think that's coming but i think it's important not to confuse like using an llm like chat gpt using you know like an image generation service like midjourney or like all the application layer stuff like e-content or anyone else like we're not agi we we are we we're, yeah. we're, we're um, generative ai which is just like as i said a big prediction model last question thank you for your time today if anyone listening amazon sellers out there want to speak with you or a member of your team about getting a hold of your service to help them with their listings with their copy with just their general amazon business where where can they find you how do they get in touch with you so i'm i'm probably most active on linkedin Max and Claire on LinkedIn. You can also email me uh, max at ecomtent.ai. Maybe we'll have a link to the the website in the description, I hope, but it's e-commerce content, ecomtent.ai. And yeah, there'll be a link. So you can find it. What's your website? It's www.ecomtent.ai. Ecomtent.ai. All right. Max, this has been really fun, really interesting. It's a it's a fascinating subject. I know I use it. Everybody uses it now and the capabilities are remarkable. And I, you know, like you said, it's not, it's as smart as the people that use it. So, you know, put the time yeah. in, practice it, you know, 
make some mistakes. It's okay. It's not, you know, it's going to give back what you give to it. Like you said, rubbish in and rubbish out. So if you, if you make some mistakes along the way, that's all right. Just keep practicing and start diversifying your language as you put that in there. And it should give you some good results as we go along. Max, again, best of luck with, with Techstars and with eContent. And we'll see you here in the future. Enjoy the rest of your time at San Francisco. And again, thank you for your time. Thanks, Brad. All right.